February wrap up. I am so excited you guys because this month I finally caved in and I joined NetGalley. So I actually have two arcs for you in addition to all these books that you see in front of you. So I'm really excited. I got to start because this month was a big month for me. So we'll start off with the first book, Girl A. You guys know I love a good mystery or thriller. This was not a mystery, just to clarify. This was not a mystery because we we kind of know what happened. So we're not you're not trying to like figure out a who done it, but you are kind of unraveling a little bit of the story as you go. So I'll tell you a little bit about what this book is about and what I thought about it. Girl A, also known as Lex, she was the one that escaped. She grew up in this house of horrors where there was this rampant child abuse. She had lots of siblings. One day she was lucky enough to escape. Dad did not make it out of the house alive. Mom went to prison for, for some length of time. There, you know, all of her, her and her siblings leave. Mom has just recently passed away in prison and has nominated girl A, Lex, as the executive of her will. And <laughs> she has the joy to find out that she now has to deal with this house of horrors, that they still own this place where she was trapped for so many years and treated so cruelly. She now is the proud owner of this property and has to figure out what to do with it along with her siblings. So she has to go back and she's meeting with each one of her siblings in turn to get their, their sign off on what to do next with the house. And as you are going through, you're getting like little flashbacks to the past. You know, what happened in the house, what led up to it up until the very end. So I thought this book, it was okay. It was, it was interesting. It wasn't at like gone girl level or oh my gosh, or you're trying to figure it out. We know what happened. She escaped at the end. Like we know that at the beginning and that's not a spoiler because in every synopsis I've read in the front page, the back page, everything like from the very first chapter, you know that she's the one that escaped. And in the book, it starts off with the escape. And so the, the first part of the book I thought was really strong because Usually in this type of an escape book, the climax is the escape. Well, they started with that. So the first half of the book was really strong. The second half of the book is just like, eh, it was okay. So for this book, I would give this a four star. It wasn't the best thriller I've ever read, but it wasn't the worst by far. The second book that we have this month, The Kindest Lie, I really like this story. It is about a woman named Ruth Tuttle. She is a black professional woman living in Chicago. She's married to a very kind man named Xavier. She's living the, the quote unquote good life. She has a very high end job living in a high end apartment. And Xavier is talking about how he really wants to start a family with Ruth. However, Ruth is holding on to a secret. When she was a teenager, she was forced to give up her child. As part of this process, she needs to go back to her hometown, which is in the great state of Indiana. And she discovers that the city is where she's from is in the midst of the economic recession. This was shortly after Obama was first elected. It was in 2008 and there is widespread poverty in her city. There's really high racial tensions and it is a beautiful adoption story. For me, I really like this book. I gave it four stars. I think that it was really important to tell this story of adoption, that there's more than one way to be a mother. If you walk into Hallmark, there's lots of cards talking about how moms do all these things, but there's very few cards about thank, thanking someone for giving them an opportunity, their, their child an opportunity to live in, in a, a better situation or a more ideal situation for whatever reason. I thought it was, it was an important story to tell. I also felt like the author did a perfect job nailing the emotions and the sentiments at the time. And I can definitely say that because Troy, Michigan is in Metro Detroit and Detroit is 
the headquarters to the big three American auto manufacturers. So I can definitely tell you she definitely nailed the sentiments at the time. It was a great book. The third book I read, this was also one of my pre-orders. This was just out in February. This is called The Gilded Ones. This was a fantasy story. It focuses on a girl named Dika or a teenage woman named Dika. She is getting ready for this purity ceremony and they have this purity ceremony because if your blood runs red, then you can join the village. If your blood runs gold, you cannot be part of the village and you have, you're sentenced to this very terrible fate. However, Dika is given this option. You can never be part of the village and suffer this terrible fate, or you can join this army of other girls, teenage girls, and fight for the emperor. Seems like a pretty good choice. So she joins the fight against the emperor. She goes to the city. She discovers some truths along the way. I thought this book was really interesting. It definitely kind of reminded me of Harry Potter in a way that I, when I was reading this book, I kept thinking this would make a really good movie. And the reason why I'm not a visual person. So when I read Lord of the Rings, I really struggled with that because I can't envision what these things look like. So it's, it's difficult if I watch though in those instances, I feel like the movie is better than the book because when I read the descriptions, I, in my head don't envision like what the movie would look like, or I, I don't even have that, that space. What if it said 10 feet, like, Oh, well, you know, I don't know. I'm not a visual person. So I thought the book was good, but for me, it didn't click really well because I thought, mm, I think this would be better as a movie. That being said, I did like it more than Lord of the Rings. Dika spent most of the book thinking, I want to be pure, I want to be pure, I want to somehow make it back into the good graces of the village. So it was, I didn't think it was very compelling as to why I wanted to necessarily root for Dika because she wasn't fighting for a larger cause. And she was very quick to latch on to people that she just met, like friends forever. Like you just met this person 10 seconds ago. What do you mean friends forever? Like, that's crazy. The, and the foreshadowing was a little heavy and very predictable. So you could see some stuff coming. I think it is YA. So I guess that might explain some of it. Again, I'll be looking for the movie. I gave this one a four star because I did like it. I thought it was interesting. I know I would not have come up with all those things. I did like it more than Lord of the Rings, but I did struggle with this one. So I did give it a four star. The next book, this was also, I believe, released in February. Yeah, I have like way too many books. That's another issue. That's a whole nother video. This is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. This was a book about a woman named Elsa. It was set in the Great Depression. So we meet Elsa. She is a 25 year old woman at that age in time that at that time period, she was considered an old maid. 25 was old past your prime until she has this lucky day. She meets this guy named Rafe. They do end up getting married and she moves to this farm where she falls in love with his family and the farmland. However, the Great Depression hits. There's really, really bad weather. So there's back to back lackluster crop years where she's really, really struggling to feed herself and her family. There's lots of heartaches and struggle. Should she stay on her land or should she leave and go to California where there's allegedly more opportunities? I thought this book was pretty long. I rated it four stars. I thought it was an important story to tell. I thought that this book really does address there is this a lot of people have a sentiment that the poor either deserve it or they're lazy. This really address that, that there are the working poor. There are people who get up at two, three o'clock in the morning who do search for work all day long. Sometimes there is no work to be had or they just do the best that they can and they can't sell what they have or just bad luck. The crops don't grow. The animals get sick and a disease. 
I thought that it was important to address that particular issue. I did think that the book was longer than it should have been once something happened once, it happened twice, like, okay, move on, I get the idea, this is 400 plus pages, let's, you know, pick up the pace a little. I also didn't like the ending, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I didn't, I didn't like the ending. That's all I'll say, because I don't want to spoil it for you. If you want more, you can see me on Goodreads, send me a, a direct message, and I'll tell you exactly why I didn't like the, the ending. But I won't ruin anything for you. This is Once Upon a River. This was, a, this was an interesting book because this was a mystery. So there is this drinking establishment called The Swan. And the regulars are getting ready. They're hunkering down for the night with their stories and their drinks when all of a sudden this man comes into the swan. They don't recognize him with, they think it's a doll. And the man is really hurt, can't really talk. The little girl is deceased. They put her outside and they, you know, go back to, to visit her and to double check on her and they see she's alive. She comes into the swan. There are three families that try to claim this little girl. And then the question is, who, which family does this girl belong to? This book was very interesting because there were lots of little stories within the major story. Some stories I thought were better than others and more compelling than, than others. But I will say the ending, I was not expecting the ending. I even shed a few few tears. So I thought it was, I, I gave this one a four star. I did think it was kind of slow in some places and some of the stories were better than others. But again, that was my four star book. And then I didn't have any, I didn't have any one star books this month. I know I must be getting soft, but this was my one two star book of the month. This was This Close to OK by Lisa Cross Smith. So this story focuses on there is a therapist who's recently been divorced from her cheating ex-husband. Her name is Tally, and Tally is driving along one rainy night when she sees a man about to jump off the bridge to his death. She's able to coax him into her car and they go for coffee and spend the weekend together. They spend the weekend chatting about their lives and ultimately we find out what led Emmett, the man who was about to jump, what led him to the bridge in the first place. I gave this book two stars for a variety of reasons. One, when I listened to the audiobook, Tally must have had like 100 million cups of coffee because she was just pestering this guy like asking him all these multiple questions before he could even get a word out. And I was thinking there's no therapist in the world that at least I've been to that ever talks like that. They ask you a question and then when you respond, they're, they, they give you a lot of time to think it over and roll it around in your mind. And it, they're trying to help you process what's going on or what's happening to in your feelings and what's going on. They're giving you time and space to process that. And then they're really listening to you. So they're stepping back and listening and then they're processing it and then they respond. But Tally was just like, bah, 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 and I wanna know this, 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 like, no, no therapist talks like that. And I understand at the beginning where you meet the person, you're like excited because you're trying to get this person off the bridge, but it didn't seem to let up. So I didn't, I, I didn't like, I didn't like that. I didn't think it was believable. And then I also didn't like the ending at all. Again, I won't spoil anything, but you can, you can direct message me or whatever if on Goodreads, if you want me to tell you exactly why I didn't like the ending, but I didn't like the ending. I also thought the foreshadowing was so heavy. It was so heavy. There were clues and I, I'm like, oh, well, what could it be with this clue? And I figured it out. So I'm probably the most gullible person in the world. So if I figured it out, that's pretty bad. So that's why I gave it two stars. And I thought it started off really well. There were some hints or they were referencing Law & Order SVU and cats like check, check. 
These are both things that I love. I've seen every episode of Law & Order SVU and you know, I'm obsessed with my cat, Bill. If you don't believe me, you can check out my Twitter page and see his picture all over the place. When I don't have anything else to post, I always take a picture of him and put it up there. So this should have been my book and I was so hopeful, but I didn't really like it. I also thought the story was overly complicated and I invented the word over the topness. It didn't need to be so complicated. I think some things are very, some stories are just beautiful because of their simplicity and just two people who were suffering and they met each other. I didn't think they needed this complicated story and doing all these things. I thought it could have and should have been more relaxed. So maybe it could have just been Emmett watching TV with Tally and she falls asleep on his shoulder and her, her hair falls over his shoulder and he feels this warmth in his heart melting and they wake up early just to watch the sunset. It's stuff like that, that I think that this book would have benefited from in these like over the top scenarios that were presented. So I think it's the author's first novel. Hopefully the, she'll, I'm sure she'll work out the kinks as she moves forward. So as I mentioned, I have two arcs for you this month from NetGalley. The first one was Here Comes After. Now this is the book, I this was on my most anticipated books of the year because I saw or I heard somewhere, if you love Where the Crawdads Sing, you need to pick up this book. So what comes after, the, there is a town in Washington that's reeling from the loss of two teenage boys who live there. They were killed in a murder-suicide. And out of the woods, we have this pregnant teenager who emerges without her family and a bunch of secrets. She ends up moving in with one of the teenage boy's fathers. So he's kind of grieving the loss of his son and he finds this young woman and they're processing the loss of his son. It is a really beautiful story of forgiveness, facing hard truths, and the power and beauty of silence. I really enjoyed that one. I thought it was very, very well written. I didn't find it as emotionally appealing as Where the Crawdads Sing. The main character in What Comes After is one of the main characters. Her name is Evangeline. She's not written very innocently, so I did not identify with her as much as I did with the character from Where the Crawdads Sing. I also didn't think that there was as much emphasis on the beauty and nature. It wasn't woven in in the same way as Where the Crawdads Sing. Although I did, I will say, I really think that the author took a lot of risk in What Comes After. She did not write the traditional like coming of age story or a damsel in distress. I thought it was, she had some really unique ideas in there. And also there was a little bit about Quakers and type, a little bit about, and I don't know much about Quakers, so she might've been completely making it up, but the only other Quaker that I know of in literature that I've read is Al Miss Alice from the book Christy. And I did really enjoy the emphasis on silence and having time to process things and think things through. I personally really enjoyed that. So I gave that book four stars. And the last book that I read and the book I loved, five stars. Listen, if you read one book this year, pick up this book. It is called How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo and Bu. Wow. I've never read a book that I knew was going to be five stars so quickly before. I was probably maybe 10 to 35 pages into the book when I'm like, wow, this is going to be a five star book. And I'll tell you kind of what it's about. This is about an African village where an American oil company has come in and in the process of doing whatever they do to oil, getting it out of the ground or whatever, they have po they polluted the groundwater and they've also polluted the, the air, the, the, the air quality. So there is a, a young lady, a teenager, when we first meet her, her name is Thula, and it talks about Thula and her family through the various generations in her family and also her classmates. So they would have a chapter of 
Thula and her classmates, and it would be Thula, and then her classmates, and then it would be like Thula's brother, like, and the classmates, then it would be the grandmother. And they would kind of, you know, flip, flip. And it was really beautiful because it really spoke to what it's like to live without clean water. Because we talk about, oh yeah, we want clean water, but in the US, I have access to clean water and we complain if we don't have water for just a few days, if there's a natural disaster. We are clamoring so loud, we don't have clean water. But there are some people who just don't have access, period. It's not a temporary thing. They live without clean water. And this book really talks about well, what is it like to live permanently without clean water? You know, how do you feel? Because I was looking up some news articles and I discovered that this is actually somewhat a true story. I think some of the, I mean, obviously the author took some literary licenses and I don't know if the story of Thula and her family is exactly accurate, but there are African villages who do have their groundwater polluted by American oil companies. And I did post, if you're interested in the true story and, and much more detail about that, I have another video, make sure to check it out. But this story also talks about, they're trying to change it, the, the villagers, they're trying to clean up the water, but that would involve the oil company changing their practices and fixing it and not being able to let oil spills happen and they actually have to clean them up timely. And there are many, 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 many efforts to lobby the government to get the oil company to clean up and, and, and care about them. And it really talks about all the different things that they tried and then, you know, everything they've tried over many, many, many years. I thought it was really great, really a David and Goliath story. It was really got me fired up and excited. And I hope you will be too. Seriously, if you read one book, make sure you pick up How Beautiful We Were. And that, my friends, was my February wrap up. Whew. I'm still reading a couple of other books. I have one day left, so you might hear about those books too. But let me know what was your favorite February read. If you believe that books create ideas and ideas change the world, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel because we'll change the world one book at a time. I'm Lisa of Troy. Peace.